Join me on my adventure to renovate an old house in Japan. Welcome back. This episode is going to be part one of two episodes that's going to be showing the complete renovation of the pit toilet room. I'm so excited to get this project going. This episode is going to focus primarily on the demolition of the room as well as the reconstruction of the subfloor. Can anybody live with a pit toilet this day and age? Well, apparently many people in this town actually still use this style of toilet. Anyways, let's take a look at what's involved in converting such a vile, evil place into something a little bit more comfortable and pleasant. Here we are, we're in the bathroom. It's kind of a little bit of a cramped uh, space. This is uh, the pit toilet. This, uh, this type of toilet was kind of used a long time ago in more countryside areas where they didn't have access to sewage. Of course, in the last 50 years, the city added sewage to the city. I've never actually used this type of toilet. Some people say they stink, some people say they don't. It actually has a, a pipe that runs out that way. That pipe has a, a fan and that continually pulls the odor out that way. Now there is going to be a contractor that's going to come out here and he's going to do the plumbing for the new toilet system, uh, which is the actual water pipes. I don't know plumbing terminology, but the exit pipe or the, you know, to get out of my house type. They're also going to fill the pit. So the pit is uh, empty. I haven't used it. So that's kind of the idea. If I use it, then I have to clean it. I'm going to rip this platform out and I'm going to rip this toilet out. I don't know what's down there, to be honest. I assume that the pit, according to the records of the house, is outside of the house, so it's actually not underneath me. So I'm not going to just break the hole and then just drop into a pit. If I do, then um, this will be the last video I make. Tools for today. My favorite reciprocating saw, gloves and a dust mask, long crowbar, small crowbar, a hammer, knee pads, power drill, and this thing. No reason just look fun to have around. I'm not sure what's underneath this platform. Maybe more floor. I'm hoping the floor just continues. Well, looks like the floor doesn't extend all the way. Just a big hole. You can see the ventilation pipe connected there. The wood is just basic tongue and groove planks of wood. I'm surprised they're not completely rotted out. They just pull right out. They're not secured by anything. It's unbelievable. The toilet bowl just pulled right out. I thought there would be more resistance. But just a slight tug and it just came right out. I'm just amazed at the simplicity of this pit toilet. We're gonna move this thing out the way. Ah. <laughs> yeah, that thing's heavy. That's it. That's the little box that they built. The throne. It's such a small working area. I hope that the usable walking space will increase a little with the new toilet. The frame of the platform needs to come out on the back here. Much easier to pull out than The subfloor support doesn't even extend all the way back. It just stops midair. There are these huge boulders that have no reason here other than just to take up space. Some areas they are used as part of the foundation, but not here. 
The flooring in the bathroom was in pretty good condition. I thought it would be worse. The hallway isn't as in good shape in comparison. You can see how it sinks with pressure. You could easily fall through if you're not careful. Now I have to wait for the plumber to install the plumbing and the poo get out of my house type. So it's strange because every time I showed somebody from Japan a picture of this pit toilet, they always referred back to a urban legend or ghost story called Hanako-san. Every time they would see the picture, they would always say, wow, that looks like a place that Hanako-san lives in. One of the more popular variations of the story is that a girl was playing hide and go seek and she fell into the pit and died and then became a ghost. And you can see how this variation of the story could be used to deter kids from playing around the toilet area. And even though I don't believe in ghosts, if you hear this story and you're a child, your imagination can certainly go wild. Can you imagine having to use this toilet in the middle of the night? All the different scenarios that would be going through a kid's mind. This hand just reaching out of the toilet, ready to grab a child and just pull him into the darkness. And so it's kind of a funny story, I think. But I think as a child, definitely would be super creepy and scary. I'm here staring down at this big black hole and everybody's telling me there's a ghost in this pit. I don't believe in ghosts, but it's still kind of fun to think about these stories when you're in a house like this at night all alone. And it's just kind of sometimes creepy if you let your imagination go wild. I dismantled the pit, sewage pipes have been installed, and the pit was filled with sand by the plumber. I didn't see Hanako-san, maybe she's buried under the sand now. My next task is to start building the subfloor. I'm going to extend the floor supports. They didn't finish the floor support because it was raised. I'll add support so that it can handle the weight of a person and the new toilet. I just measured the old frame support beams and match the new support wood beams. The framing here, I, what I did was I just put, uh, I used this piece here that was already here to support the new beam all the way across. I put a little support beam underneath here that's drilled into the wall there. I have a thick moisture sheet that will go under everything. It's for extra moisture protection. I will also install an electrical socket for the toilet. It will need to be powered because it's a fancy toilet. I installed the moisture sheet from the center and spread it out. I bought another expensive toy. This is a jigsaw. I'll use it to cut round holes and get more precise cuts on the corners. I'm installing particle board which is also moisture treated. I'm obsessed with moisture protection. I don't want my bathroom to feel damp. Again, it's probably overkill. The first piece is in. The jigsaw helped to cut around the who get out of my house type. down to the last piece. I'm so happy to almost be finished with this project. The last piece of the subfloor didn't fit well. It didn't land within the area of the support beams. So I added support on the corners. I used a piece of wood so it wouldn't just float on the corners. This way the corners can be supported and screwed down. It was much harder than I expected. But now it's finished and I was able to accomplish what I wanted to do. That's it for this episode. I'm happy to be finished with the demolition of the pit toilet room as well as the reconstruction of the subfloor. I know that it might not look like much now, but when I'm finished, it's going to be very unrecognizable from what it is. So I hope that you enjoyed and I'm happy that I didn't see any pit toilet ghosts. What's going on?
Hey, 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 I'm sorry I destroyed your house. It had to be done. And come on, what's with that long, crazy hair? You need a haircut since like 1980. It's not creeping me out. It just looks silly. Hey, okay, I was just joking. Hey, don't get any closer. Useless. I hate you, useless. <laughs> Whew, I shouldn't have ate that burrito. I'm gonna tear you up. What it out? Fucking beat me. <laughs> <laughs>